G'day guys, and welcome to the channel. We're going to be reviewing Harry Potter Magic Awakened. It is due for global release in June 27th, which is only a few days away from now. I've been playing on the soft release pretty much every day since I found it, which is just a bit over a month now. We're going to watch the trailer that just dropped. That is the official release date, it says the 27th of June. And I'll have a little bit of talk through there about the artwork, the gameplay styles, and so on and so forth. And then we'll go over and I'll show you a, a bit of in-game that I've been playing and then we'll just talk through that. I'll give you my brutally honest review here because there are some good and bad points but I really feel like this game does have a bright future ahead. So let's get into it. So as we can see here, this is the start of the trailer. This is us walking into the Forbidden Forest which is like a dungeon within the game. Um, it's only one of the game modes. It's a eight stage run and then you have the Deathly Dell which is like a 20 stage run. It is surprisingly harder, so much harder, and going through both of these, you take two friends. You can take in-game characters, which we'll get to all this in a little bit more in-depth when you get there. But let's talk about the main talking point right here, is the art style. If you haven't seen it already yet, it is very, very different to the main games and any other Harry Potter game I've seen. I think it's really cool though, it is only on mobile. You can, you can play on emulators, which is how I'm gonna be recording this for you. But I think it really separates itself from your normal PC run of the mill Harry Potter game that came out earlier this year. Uh, it's I think it's very polarizing. Some people absolutely love this style, and some people like despise it. I think for a mobile game, this is probably the better style to go with because it it won't take up like all your phone's memory just to be on there. Your phone shouldn't overheat. I haven't had any problems with when I'm in game and charging my phone at the same time, like my phone getting hot or lag. Get a little bit of lag because I'm in Australia, my internet's not the best, but everywhere else around the world you should be pretty sweet. Going into a little bit more, art I think is great. If you don't like it, I think it's kind of something you might be able to get past. But then the ga actual game style within the game, as you can see, is these cards. It's kind of like that gacha, gacha style of game where you pull keys, or they're in-game, they're called keys. There's gold and there's the blue ones. Higher rarities for each one. They're pretty easy to collect within game. I think you can get nearly 10 a day um, between the both of them. Gold with higher chance. I've had a fair few mythic cards come out, so it isn't like you can't acquire all the cards. It's just that to level up the cards, you need to continually get more of that card to level up. So. Obviously, paying in this game will get you further faster, but we'll get into that right now. So here we are, we're in game. This is where you spawn straight away. You are in your dorm. You can have up to three other people in a dormitory and it sees where it shows you where the other people are and it's probably a good fact to find people that are going to be on at the same time with you because if you team up with your roommates in the dueling club, you get an extra 20% gold and if you do the Forbidden Forest with roommates, you get you gain extra bonuses. Gold is gold is like gold. Like you you need gold so much for this game. In the early game you think, oh man, I got so much gold, what's going on? But as you progress through, gold is so so much needed. It is like as it is gold. I can't stress that enough. Before I do anything in a game, I, I, I head over to the settings, pick the display that you want, I usually drop it down just a little bit because I don't really care that much and it saves your battery and GPU and all that kind of stuff. Everything else down here is pretty standard. Have a look and do what you need. Very important one, go over to download and start these straight away. So this is the first time for me logging on to the LD player which is the emulator that I'm using. I tried Bluestacks, Bluestacks doesn't work very good. There's LD player and MU, MU player, I think it's called. I've heard that LD and MU work very well. If you do need help logging in and working out all this, let me know in the comments below and I will I can put out a video on how to do that as well. But make sure you come into here on your phone, wherever, and start downloading all of these straight away. This has taken some time. Like, I think I've been waiting maybe 10 minutes and I've only downloaded two. Maybe it's just my, my internet. Obviously, in Australia, internet's pretty slow. This is one downfall I find. You download a game, you still got to wait for so much of this to download, but that's how games are these days, aren't they? Have a look around. Anything else? I think make sure you scroll down. I don't play games with sound, so I always turn these right down. Some of the sound that people have said is really weird. You can have a, a 
a girl player and when you do a spell it'll say it in Voldemort's voice or something which is really weird but just make sure you go through and change all these to whatever you want I think that is the most important thing with all games and they do have a very very big open slatter of what you can pick some games have nothing so I, that is a very big positive here I'm just going to click down to low because it should make it a little bit easier for me on my computer whilst I do other things like like stream and whatever. So if you have a look, just straight up above me there, you've got the map. It has everything outlined. You can go straight to the classes, the, whichever class you want to go to, the dueling club, social club. We'll run through all these in a bit, a bit later. But it is probably one of the best maps and navigations that I've seen in a game. It is super easy and you can go straight to wherever you want to with one click. It is amazing. And it has a pretty cool overview of Hogwarts, just in that old style um scroll type of map so as you can see it's pretty much right above me here i've got season tasks and then i've also got my daily tasks i've already done all my daily tasks for the day they update at 5 a.m my time i'm not sure what that is you know worldwide time so head over to the right hand side here up the top we have the shop at the moment you have the mystery wheel i think for the first half of the month it is a bit different it is a chance at a at a, at a rare card um, up to 50 and then at the 50 point you automatically get it second half of the month seems to be this wheel where you get clock turn keys it seems like the only way to get these is through gems here you get seven clock turn keys for a little bit less that's why i went for that one i don't know if this is really worth it i haven't actually delved into the amounts and if it's worth it or not i just wanted to get this i had enough to to get it at the start of the game, they really ramp you with gold. They ramp you with um, gems, so it feels like you get a lot. And then you kind of hit that wall where the grind actually starts. I, I don't know. This is a really chance kind of thing. If you have a look at a probability, you got 2.5 for the Hawk Hour, 1.7, 0. 0.8. And I got the Wand, which I, I feel like is probably the best one because you get some bonuses out of the Wand. And then just some other things down the bottom here. So that is, that is everything for the Mystery Wheel. <sighs> Unless you're going to be pay to win, it's probably not somewhere where you're going to go very often, to be honest. Um, I think the gems are well worth saving and using elsewhere. The bundles, as normal play, normal games, you've got these standard bundles that you can buy. Again, I haven't delved into the numbers to see what is actually worth buying here. Magical Studies, this is where the gacha style of game comes in. You pull your basic study, which only you can get up to an epic. And then you have advanced study which has legendary and mythic in it as well so as you can see here after 30 draws you get a guaranteed rare card and after 20 of the advanced study you get a legendary or mythic they just take time and effort to get them as i said you can probably get about 10 keys a day in either one we'll 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 do 10 here just so you can see what the animation looks like i think it's pretty cool as you can see i've got a rare card for the, from this one and this shows the book and this is like your spells so it only show it only shows you new cards and epics if you have already got them. Nothing, and then it'll come up here and show you everything that you've got. We keep going down. You got daily items. You have a free item in here. Make sure you get this every day. It is minimal. It's small, but you've got to take everything you can get. I don't think much of this is worth buying unless you are a pay-to-win player. But like twenty thousand gold, I've never got to that much. Like. 2,800 is not much at all. Some cards, I'm only at like level 8 or 9 in cards, and they're taking the 1,000 to 1,500 just to level up, and you get a lot of cards. This one is like your thank you note exchange. You seem to get these from doing Forbidden Forest with other players or NPCs. Again, I haven't spent any here. I've only got 30, so I don't really know what's worth here. Probably gold for 10, get 1,000. I'm not sure exactly curious card so that's to get four cards with a two percent chance to get a legendary i don't know if that's really worth it either gold is so lucrative it's, it's what you need so much and then we come down to lot the bottom one here this is obviously a pay to win you get your first you get your first purchase with the extra value as you can see i've done these two here because i wanted some gems to get the card from the start of the month all honesty i, I do spend some money on games i'm not a huge whale by any means but the content that I do continually make on this game is going to be kind of that in between. It's not free to play, but it's not mile. It's just kind of a standard spend here and there. There's also this loyalty rewards, which is pretty standard in games now, as you 
have purchased a certain amount, you you gain rewards. I guess it's something just a little bit extra on top. It's nothing too out there. Like the one skin would probably be awesome, but like 88,000 is huge. So, and, and this robe looks awesome. You actually get special effects stuff from this clothing. So it is probably worth it getting all the way up to here. But we'll keep, we'll go into a few game modes right now. Oh, actually, sorry, one, one more thing. We have the magic pass. It's just a standard season pass that you see everywhere. There is a paid version where you get extra stuff for fifteen ninety nine. I think this is in Australian dollars, so wherever you are, it might be a little bit different. And then you have the deluxe one, which gets you five levels forward. You get an extra thirty percent gold. You get another hat and an extra legendary or mythic card. I don't really know if that is worth the extra money. If you are going to do it, I think this $15 should be enough. One card and really one hat. Obviously, bonus gold's good, but yeah, it's, it's, I don't think it's really that worth it. I haven't delved into the numbers again. As you can see, it is, there's six days to go. I've done every, every challenge possible, and I think I got to the end yesterday. So you do have a fair bit of buffer, and you do not need to play this every day. So if we come into the tasks here... This daily ones, you can go back each day and claim them. I don't believe you can go back to last week's though. So each week, you can come in and do all of these in one go if you really wanted to at the end of the week. Get your 100 gold, finish all these, and finish all these. They're all pretty simple. Like talk to a portrait. Takes two seconds. Two duels. Stuff all. View the recommended deck. They're all really, really easy. The storyline, as I said, you've gone. I've gone through year one and year two, and it, it's a, it's a really weird story. It, you st your first year story and second year story, kind of follows Harry Potter's storyline, but just a little bit different. It's, it's. You still go to to Hagrid. You do all the night chess. You do all the stuff that you do in the movies, but it's kind of yourself and your mates, which I find weird, because this is kind of set. In the future, after Harry Potter and Hermione, because I think Neville's a teacher and a few other things. So, I do like how they've gone on their own storyline here. It's just, everything has taken it apart from the original Harry Potter and put their own stuff in there. But still with the lore from Harry Potter, which I love. You do get a, a lot of items from it. And that's what I said. They do push you with heaps of items straight off the bat. Which is great because you get, you, you progress really fast. I'm hoping... Year 3 comes out very soon. I'm, I wouldn't believe it comes out with global release, but I think that would be really good. As you can see here, a red-haired woman appeared in front of Daniel. Could it be his mother back from Azkaban? As if that wasn't enough, Daniel also seems to be connected to a secret organization. Does that not sound like the third Harry Potter movie? <laughs> I do love it, though. I do love it. it it's pretty awesome. Again, I'm not a massive storyline guy, so I didn't read it word for word the whole way through, but... I. I did notice. The only thing with the story, on the other hand, the bad side, it's very repetitive. Very, very repetitive. Like, go here, beat this person. Go here, duel this person. Like, obviously, dueling's the main part of it, or you go, go talk to this person. Now go to talk to this person. Now go talk to this person. Like, there wasn't really anything out of the ordinary or anything introduced within the storyline that really captured me really hard. And season... These are obviously just your long-term stuff. Attend classes for 15 days. Explore the Deathly Dell three times. That's one you definitely need friends with to go to that soon. So also we've got a sign in every day. You get a you get some gear every day. There's tasks. Um, there's a new dual mode, which is a free-for-all, which I touched on before. I don't really... Oh, it, it's fun, but you don't get anything out of it except for the daily task is pretty much always do that mode. Um, in your last week, you don't lose points in dueling for your first three battles. I don't know. It really doesn't help anyone. Hogwarts exam week. I'm pretty sure that's going to be finished by the time this is released to the world. New Forbidden Forest stages will go to there now. And make sure you link your W, your Warner Brother Games account because you get some gems for free. And that's that mystery wheel we talked about before. So let's go into the battling. So as you can see, we just click map, go dueling club, and just go. Easy. You spawn. Well, you don't spawn. You get to choose which dueling club. Free for all, as you can see. It only has a few days left. Not sure if it's coming back. Best partners, duos. So you can just you, you battle with a friend. You don't have to have a friend. You can just click go and it'll find one for you. 
Solo is what I've been kind of grinding because I want to get up to the next level after Platinum. It does take a fair bit of time because you get about 30 to 40 points per per one. And as you see, you need 5,400. That is a lot of jewels because you do, you do lose. So let's have a look at decks before we jump in. There's a lot here to take in straight off the bat. So we'll start at the top. We'll start with the Echoes. So this means you kind of battle like that character would have battled. So Dobby, every second movement, you blink to where you've clicked. You will, we'll go through that when we get there. Um, Harry Potter uh, makes your spells stronger. You've got the Weasley Twins. You've got Hagrid. You've got Newt, Scalamander. You've got Snape. You've got Hermione. You've got Neville. And you've got Bellatrix Lestrange. They all have their own way of battling. And you just got to find your way that you really like. Then we come down to the cards. So this is my spell book. I've got 72 out of 74 cards. The only ones I'm missing is one legendary and one mythic. I'm unsure if you're, you can get them right now. And up here, there is zero and two. That is the magic points it costs to do the spell. So over time, your MP bar regenerates, which we'll get into very soon. As we go up, they get higher. See the epic cards are coming in here, the purple ones. And then you get your legendary gold ones here. So if you've got, you've got your two mythic ones up here, which are your Crucio and your other one that Voldemort uses. Very, very dark. <laughs> but they are some of my favorite, favorite cards to use. And then we have companions. So this is another person that you summon onto the field that helps you. So I like Hermione because she does another spell that you use. She will also do that spell. Um, this is Cassandra. She stands in the middle and just does lightning bolts. So you, again, you just need to find the way that you want to play. And maybe in a videos down the track, we'll go through some different styles of decks. But I do like the cards. The cards are really cool. The deck building is really cool. There is a lot of thought that goes into it. And I have played games where deck building is a massive part, but then there's no real strategy when it gets to the actual end game. And you can just build your deck and it's just OP. But this, you could have the best deck in the world and someone could outplay you by a hundred times. We'll, we'll get into how the game plays right now. So obviously you just click that match matchmaking at the moment because it is very server orientated. There is lots of bots that you play. Um, um, hopefully once it comes into worlds, then there'll be a lot less bots. But it's a pretty standard battlefield. You have your side, you have their side. You can't go past halfway, but you can summon things on their side of the board. You just can't go past. I don't know how this is going to go, if it's going to be fairly laggy or not. But this is what the platinum board looks like. Each one, each level seems to have its own board, which I really like. And this just shows off who it is. So you click to move, and then you drag your card. So as you can see, I like putting Hermione out there and doing the old Avada Kedabra or whatever it is, and it absolutely smashes them straight up to the bat. I'm going to put this here. But yeah, this, this style of bat battling, I, I really like. It's a bit different. You have full control. Like, it is all up to you. I think it is really cool and different, and I haven't seen anything like this in many games. As you can see, he's got this guy just spawning things in the background. Um, there's spells and there's summons. I'm going to hit him with this one. And absolutely drain him of his life. But the whole thing is to find a way that you like to battle. There is All cards are useful in their own respect. And that's what I really like about games sometimes. Because sometimes those common cards can be absolutely useless. And it's not worth having them in your deck. But anywhere from the from the two MP cards to the nine M or seven MP cards are useful in some sort of way, which I find it, it makes a huge balance within the game. You, you hardly ever get this on in games. And I've come from many of other gacha games where if you get those common cards, you're just like, what, what am I going to do with this? Like it is just ridiculous. And it does look like I'm going to lose here. I'm going to do a little heal. Maybe I'll get lucky. Yeah, oh, watch this. Boom. Take him. 
Take him. Oh. Come on, snowman. Boom. Look at that. Good little win there. Clutch, clutch win. So that's the battling. The dungeon is a bit different. It's more of a circle and you can walk everywhere and there's just a boss that walks around. There's a dueling club, which we were just in. Today's classes, Hogwarts exam week, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be over. There's about seven or eight different types of classes you can do and you've got to work your way up from basic through to advanced. Pretty easy. It doesn't take very much time. You just got to see. It'll give you 10 achievements to do to level up to the next one. The social club, which you go and dance with a partner. I don't know how that's going to work on a computer. Forbidden Forest, let's go there. So you've got three options here. You do need to do this one on your left first, which is the solo exploration. It's pretty easy for a certain period of time. And it tells you if your deck is high enough leveled. In the middle here, you have a car. I'm not sure what level you unlocked that, but it just, it just keeps on giving you echoes gold and a few other things and then this is the most fun part this is your haunted hollow which is the easier eight stage team dungeon and then the deathly dell which is a 20 stage dungeon which you definitely need friends for with the haunted hollow you can be begin and choose some npcs to come along with you they're absolutely useless but it means that the enemies attack them rather than you and they pick you up so and make sure you choose the level that's suited for you. It tells you what spellbook level you should use. If you're with other real people, you can play a lot higher than what you actually, what it actually tells you. So as we continue down the map, we've got Castle Skies, which I'll show you just in a second. You've got your team, which is like a 50-person team that you go on. And then there is a team event that you go. And it's kind of like a dungeon boss where you all keep on going in. And it just continually takes down their, their health. But the next person comes in, health keeps coming down, and you go through, I think, 10 stages, upgrade yourselves, and whatever. And I think that resets every week. Your dormitory, where we started, Hagrid's hut, just Hagrid. And then there's all these different rooms that you go to, all the classrooms, and they all look a little bit different, which is pretty cool. Pretty much how they look in the, in the movies. You do need to look out. We'll go into one of them soon, and there is some little Easter eggs in each room. And then Diagon Alley, which there's not much in there right now to do you will have to go through there in the story but let's have a let's have a walk around on the map here and then you can hop up on your broom which i think is awesome and just fly around it is actually really smooth i really like this i i, I did not believe that this was going to be very good at all it is a bit hard to look around on this computer. And we do have this. Which is really hard on a computer. Last thing, we'll head over to a room and I'll see if there's anything that I haven't found yet. Just to show you what you should be looking for in every room. So you will have to go to a lot of these rooms for your classes, for the story. Make sure you have a look around everywhere because, as you can see, there's jars like this. Inspect. And you get gems. And you get other things depending where you are. Some rooms have big chests that you open and you even get even more. And sometimes there's a howler that sits in different spots. I think that's for a later video I'll show you where all the secret eggs, Easter eggs are within the game. That is everything there is within Magic Awakened. I know I probably rambled on for a fair bit there, but I really wanted to give you a really good feel of what the game looks like, feels like when you're playing. If you have liked this, let me know down in the bottom in the comments. Let me know what you would like to see going forward. If you're going to actually play this game or not, let me know. I'd, I'd love to know this and if it's worth me even continually making content on or not. Overall, I think the game does have a bright future. It is very early. Obviously, world release is coming. Everyone's been going when, 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 when. Everyone is really excited that world release does seem like it's coming. And I hope that it hits as well as it should be. Like, so many people play play these rip-off games and play them for ages, give them money. But this is an actual Warner Brothers affiliated Harry Potter game. So get in, get playing it, and I'll see you in a video soon.